but uh, so uh, the entire world has just exited the Christmas season. Um, we refer to it here as Advent, um, you know, with uh, with the referring of Christmas, uh, we all point towards Christ. So the world even acknowledges that uh, the celebration of Christmas is mainly due to the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, we see that in decorations, um, whether it be yard, uh, sitting up on the shelves. Uh, you see a lot of the manger scenes. Um, for me, it was uh, an inflatable from the local Home Depot. Um, hopefully all those decorations have been taken down. I saw some last night on the way from home from work that haven't quite made it back into storage yet. So, um, but with taking those down, um, the world starts to release the idea uh, of, of a major celebration, um, one that starts now in, in around Halloween, it seems like, through uh, in retail. Um, for us as Christians, it still goes strong, uh, but for the world, it starts to uh, dissipate as far as the focus of Christ. Um, and I think that's due to uh, the lack of idea or the lack of knowledge of who Christ actually is. Um, so for the world, uh, they, they focus on Christ at this time as, as a little baby. And as we go into Easter, they understand Christ too, as uh, they understand the reason, especially in the South, for uh, the celebration of Easter for the death of Christ. Um, and we dress our, our kids up, our families up. Um, but after that, it, it dies off again. So um, with that, it there is a major um, separation and, and a misunderstanding of who Christ uh, is. Um, maybe you've been to like a birthday or a funeral and you've walked in and you're there with maybe a new girlfriend or your wife or, or maybe a coworker, and you know that there's a big celebration, but you don't really understand who this person is that we're celebrating. You may know their name, um, but as far as the major reason as to why you're there, it uh, doesn't quite hit that. So um, today I'm going to be uh, speaking or preaching from the Gospel of John. Uh, I believe that John clearly lays that out immediately of who Christ is. So the uh, so if you would open the Bible up to uh, John, the Gospel of John, we're going to be reading uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Um, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So there's three points that I want to hit on today. Uh, one, the first thing is the deity of Christ. Um, the, there are four Gospels. You know, we all know them as, as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or maybe vice versa, you know, different order than that. But uh, John was, uh, was written a little bit later than the previous Gospels. Uh, and John started facing, I guess, what was known as the Gnostics at the time. So there's importance to starting off with the fact that Jesus is God. Um, we see that in the, in the first few verses. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word, of course, is referring to Jesus. Um, this is found later in verses, uh, verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Um, Christ is always there. Um, right now, in, as we come out of Christmas, or as we went into Christmas, people know that Christmas was the day that, that Christ was born. Uh, he didn't just pop up and, and happen to be there. Uh, John lays it very clearly that he's been there the entire time. Um, he's eternal, not created. Uh, he's referred to as a word. Um, means that God's speaking to us directly. Um, you know, the word was with God. The word was God. Uh, Jesus is referred to as a word. Um, I think that's very important through identifying that it's the word. We see that that. That's how God is. We get to see the nature of God through Christ, um, through his through speaking to us. Um, again, these verses solidify that Christ is God. There's no, um, there's no differentiating that. It's very solid. Um, uh, there are other religions, even today, uh, that, that would deny that. Um, and I think that that's, that's a big hinge through multiple different uh, sections. So Jehovah's Witnesses believe, of course, that he was a God, or um, a man. Uh, the Muslims don't agree that he was uh, God. Um, and again, that's where we find our salvation. So, um, so why be so blunt? 
uh, John wanted to ensure that we immediately knew that Christ is God before he starts dealing with the life and death of Christ. I think it's, it's, it's extremely important in acknowledging that uh, at the time of writing this, again, he was dealing with Gnosticism that, that was rising, with, which would challenge the, or argue the divinity of Christ. I think that we deal with that today on, on just a, a modern thing, you know, when people um, focus on Christ as just a child, as just a baby, um, and never really focus on the life uh, or, or the beginning of Christ. Um, they don't understand the importance of, of, you know, if you were to ask a non-believer, well, what was the importance of, of Christ's birth? Well, he was God's son, right? You know, yeah, but why was he sent? Uh, there are multiple things that, that go into uh, reasons before that. Um, the other thing to, to point out is that he was, with God, displays equal nature. Um, we all saw what, what happened to Moses just by hiding behind a, a rock and seeing the backside of God. Um, to be able to be in the presence of God uh, means that he was without blemish. He was perfect. Um, he was God, so... Um, when seeing Christ as a baby or as a child and seeing Christ as God, it costs a, a, different, type of, a, a different type of worship. We are no longer celebrating just a birthday. We are celebrating uh, the bringing forth of our God, our Savior. So uh, the second point I want to see is our relation to Christ. Um, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, we are his creation we were made by Christ. Uh, John uses it a positive, negative in the in his sentences. I think he does that to shut out any rebuttals. Um, you know, I don't like spiders, so did Christ really create spiders? Absolutely. Um, I don't like snakes. Did he make that? Yes. No, I don't like my neighbor. Surely he didn't make him. No, he did. So, um, I, I, growing up in the South, we know a lot of people who can fix cars, right? So, um, there's some people that you can call up, and that would be my dad, where I'm, I say, hey, you know, my car's making a pretty funny noise. Any idea what it is? And he can almost identify it immediately. Uh, we are Christ's creation. When he came, he came to restore, right? So um, who's better to restore their creation than the person that created it? Again, going back to the person that, I, that can work on a car, um, my dad can build an engine from the ground up. Christ built us from the ground up. So... He knows that we're broken. He knows that the broken pieces that, we're, that, that we have and, and knows immediately how to fix it. He understands our broken stage. Uh, again, the miracles that you go back to that he created were restoring. Um, most of the times that when he healed, he reached out and said, your sins are forgiven. Stand and walk. He restored us to a stage before sin. So. Um, also that, and, and we see the, the layout. In him was a life, and the life was a light of man. Man required him before the fall. So we see a picture of him being, being there before creation and through creation. So uh, it outlines that in him was our, our life and our light. So without Christ, we get the opposite. It's death and darkness. So the opposite of life and light is darkness and death. Um, he is our light and our life in all aspects. We have resolution with God in heaven because of him. Uh, but we also have life on earth by the knowledge of his loving sacrifice um, we find our hope and our glory in Christ, even on earth. Uh, work's difficult. I had a tough day at work. It's okay. That's not my end goal. Uh, finance is tough. Yeah, that is very difficult. Uh, but our glory is found in Christ. So um, we know that the physical things here uh, don't matter on earth, uh, don't matter to us, because in the end goal, Christ is, is our solution. So the plan has always been for Christ to be the rescue. Um, the other point that I want to see, uh, that I want to point out here is Jesus's eternal victory. Um, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So sin is the enemy and the darkness, um, and it flees from Christ. Um, Christ defeated sin through his death, burial and resurrection, um, so other interpretations, uh, that I've read, uh, also, um, state that the darkness has not comprehended it or, the, or apprehended it. But I don't think that necessarily, um, I don't think that they, they, they are opposing each other. I think that it still shows that, that Christ has overcome sin and that he is victorious uh, over, over darkness and sin. So uh, John uses present tense in the description of Christ uh, as far as the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Uh, that is a present tense. 
Um, John uses that because we see that Christ didn't overcome the darkness for just the people in 33 AD or, or 37 AD, whichever timeline you want to follow, uh, but that he over overcame it once and for all. Uh, we're here 2,000 years later, um, unless you have a conspiracy theory about the calendars, which I know is, is out there. Uh, the same victory applies to you. Um, so we can rejoice in that. So uh, in closing, <laughs> um, I grew up knowing uh, God as uh, the world's interpretation of God. Um, I grew up knowing about the flood, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, destruction. Um, I knew about a, a reactionary God that um, if you sinned, then he was quick to punish. Uh, he was on a throne um, just waiting for sin. Um, so the God of the Old Testament, the creator of the flood, the destroyer of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the bringer of plagues, uh, again, was, was who I know, and I feared him. I was terrified uh, because, believe it or not, I was a sinner, and I am still a sinner. So, um, so for a while there, I was upset, um, but like one of our pastors told me, um, I, I just didn't, or Jesus just hadn't revealed himself to me yet. I think that we face a lot of people in this day and age that, that don't really know Jesus just yet. He hasn't been revealed, or, or they haven't seen him. Um, they understand that there is a God. They understand that, that there was a birth, and that there was a death, and there, there was a resurrection, but they don't understand the importance of it or who Christ was out of that. Um, so by understanding Christ, you understand the nature of God. Uh, let's be reminded from this text that Christ is God. God stepped out of his glory in, in time and space, or into time and space, to pay our sin debt. Uh, he came to rescue us. Uh, as we come out of the, the season of Christmas, and we're going into the season of Easter, um, I challenge you guys, and, and even myself, to engage those around us with simple questions. And those are, who was, is Jesus? Why is his birth or death or resurrection so important? Um, and even greater, um, why did he do it for you? So.